Dover, New Hampshire. This is my uh, 1970 Articat 295 Camp Panther. Got a Cola 295. Uh, got a 1973 Harley Davidson 440. It's uh, all Harley Davidson AMF. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> nice. Runs good. Oh yeah, they run beautiful, both of them. Nice. That's a sharp looking sled right there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Greg Allen. I'm from Glen, New Hampshire, and we're up at Paul Crane's Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire, for the 2018 Vintage Snowmobile Show. I brought up four sleds. Uh, as you can see, I'm a Clarus fan. Uh, first one I brought up is the uh, an original unrestored 1977 TX40. Is it a trail muscle sled? In that category, it would be classed in uh, these. Back in the day, they were one of the fastest sleds that, that year. And, uh, this next one, this is what some people consider the holy grail of Polaris. It's a 19, this is the first year for the Polaris liquid cooled TXL. It's 1977. These are extremely fast. They won a lot of country, cross country races, high ice races. I took uh, third place last year at the Cal County Cup. Nice. 2017. Nice. I was there last year. I oh, was I there? Yeah. That. yeah. I was there. Nice. Yeah, I did all right. Nice. <laughs> Didn't wreck it. It's, a lot of people call and say, my God, what are you racing that for? That thing is mint. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I'm going to have fun with it. Good. Yeah, you might as well enjoy it. And this is, uh, this is a TX, modified TX250. Uh, this is all set up for oval racing also. Uh, it's got the handlebars and the loop, loop tanks you can see there in the back. Yes, yeah. It's got the custom seat on it. Set up. It only turns left. It won't turn right. I like that loop tank. That's yeah. cool. That's set up just for racing. And this is a 1978 RXL clone that I built. Wow, that's a beauty. about a year and a half of getting parts and pieces to build this from scratch. I had just a basic tunnel, and I built it, built it from there. Nice. It's uh, got a three-cylinder. 40 motor in it, very, very fast in the day. This was uh, what was Claris found as the uh, Midnight Blue Express when they first came out with this. That was the most winning sled ever in, in any snowmobile history. Yeah, it was that year they just won every oval race it was one, two, yeah. three. Wasn't that one of the first years with independent suspension? Yeah, in the right. They they had uh, been racing it some up in Alaska and had a few problems, and the other manufacturers kind of didn't really pay attention to what they were doing, but they knew they really had something special. And then uh, when they had the, the first races, they were still, you know, they didn't believe it, how, how fast and how far ahead they were. But by the third race of the season, they said, Claris is onto something. And, uh, they actually tried to change the rules so they couldn't race it. Bob Eastman put up a big fight. He had the rule book, and they had a big meeting. And uh, there was nothing in the rule book that said their sleds were illegal. And they, <laughs> he knew he had them. Nice. And Claris just dominated that year like no other team ever has and probably never will. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.
Hi, my name is uh, Steve Dickinson. I'm from Rowan, New Hampshire. This is a 1964 Polaris uh, Voyager. It's all been restored. Uh, take it every year up to go up to Mount Washington in March. And last year we actually made it all the way to the top. It's got a 12 horse polar motor on it, rear engine, you can seat two. Uh, they do have some fiberglass cabs on the top of it. It's an accessory you can get with it. Uh, this other one is another custom uh, kitty cat that I built for my granddaughter. This is a 76 Articat, and it uh, looks this like an Articat 560D. Okay, yeah. Uh, the skis are made wider, has custom bumpers made, custom seat made on it, headlights on it. Granddaughter's three, next year she'll be able to, enough, she'll be able to turn around and drive it. Nice. She'll be driving it. This one is a 72 uh, Kitty Cat. I built this for her also. It's supposed to be a clone to a 72 EXT. Uh, two years ago in Lancaster at the National Show, we took first place in the custom class with all the regular sleds and custom sleds. Wow. Took first place in the custom class. It's got the exhaust on it and the heads and the EXT seats and mud flap. And, uh, the gauge there. on there too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's amazing. Kind of custom made. I built that for her, and she'll be driving that next year. Nice. And this we've got a '68 Panther. Yeah, I don't always wanted a '68. I had a '70 and a '69, and '68. It's got the chrome bumper in the front, and round two bumper, and uh, it's got a NOS cab, new uh, decals, uh, windshield on it, and uh, it's got a P12, which is a single cylinder uh, motor on it. Uh, with the storage bag in the back, and that's the colors that they had for in '68 with the left front seat. In it. Nice. And they've got the uh, back in the day, the racers used to use them. They called the uh, pizza cutters, and where it is supposed to help them go around corners a little bit more. It's kind of a novelty thing back in the day. For Give you a bite on. in the ice and hard yeah. pack trail. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's pretty much it. I've never seen that. That's really cool. Yeah, they called pizza cutters. Yeah, it looks like a pizza cutter. Yeah, that's pretty much what they are. They had them on the racetrack for the carbides. They didn't have a lot of them back then. So sure. that was the alternative to the, to the carbides. They, give it, they came up with a lot of different things on different machines. Nice. Now, I remember you wearing that coat last year. Yeah. yeah that, now, what was that, the, there was a story with that coat. Yeah, that, that coat belonged to one of the first uh, Polaris dealers in New Hampshire, uh, Ray Doucette. From Ray's gun shop. Uh, that's a coat he wore in the 1960s. He used to go up to the Allagash with the uh, founder and uh, the guy that invented Polaris uh, snowmobiles, and they used to go up there and try out the uh, snow machines in Maine because of the uh, conditions were different than in Minnesota. And I was lucky enough to be able to buy his jacket, and I also have his uh, wooden sled, which I didn't bring today, but uh, there was only eight of those ever made, uh, and they used those to go up to the Allagash. And I have that, which is all original shape and everything else. Nice. Kind of a novelty thing that uh, they had back in the uh, side in '61, and they ran until '67, and they still do that annual trip every year up in the Allegash and really? they, uh, test out the machines to see how they go in those conditions, and report back to Minnesota, make some changes, and end up uh, trying to improve the sled to make them better for all all different conditions. Yeah. The main winters were different than they were in Minnesota. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you, Steve. Okay, I appreciate it. Yep. My name is Paul Belfay from Waterford, Vermont. I'm here at Cranes. Snowmobile Museum for a snowmobile show, and I brought a few of my sleds over, and I'll tell you a few things about them. Here is a 1976 Mercury Snow Twister, a 340 water cooled engine. Mercury made this machine in three engine sizes 250, 340, and 440. They built 550 of each engine size, and they were designed and built for racing, and in 76, they cleaned house. Just no other machine could stay with them. It's all aluminum chassis, aluminum skis, uh, very lightweight. Uh, weighs about 300 pounds, as you can see. No shock in the rear suspension. It was made just to turn left, as you can see by the loop handlebars. This machine is all original. It's the way it came from the factory. Next, we can move on to the Yamaha. I have some racing Yamaha here. This is a 1978 factory uh, race sled. Uh, it only came once engine size. It's a 440. Water cooled. Again, designed to turn left. It was uh, raced for one season. Uh, the history of it, uh, the Yamaha sled was really never ready for, for snow pro racing and it did not do very well. But it's a very nice looking snowmobile and there are about 50 left in existence. They made about 150 of them. Wow. Again, all aluminum.
<laughs> That's got some collectible value to it. Yes. Yep. Nice, nice. Probably only a couple in New England. Really? Yep. Here we have a 1977 uh, SRX. It was designed for oval racing in the stock class. Therefore, it had to have a headlight and a tail light for a stock machine. But as you can see, it didn't come with a windshield. It has a little handlebar. And again, we have a lightweight snowmobile, and it did very well in racing. It weighed about 330 pounds, and it had about 100 horsepower. So power to weight. 100 excellent. horsepower. Yeah. That's a lot for that day. Yeah, a lot, very much so. Wow. Yes. And this sled is a 1976 SRX. It's the first water-cooled engine that Yamaha ever built. Again, for stock racing. Stock class racing again. Headlight, tail light was mandatory for for the machines to to have in racing stock class. Again, uh, first water cooled Yamaha motor, and again it has uh, aluminum skis. A lot of use of aluminum without a windshield. Um, it did very well in racing, but it could not beat the Mercury Snow Twister. <laughs> so there you that have it. That is the champion. Yeah, we have a uh, nice line of uh, race sleds here. Good. Well, thank you, Paul. It's nice to meet you. Well, thank you. Hi, my name is Dave. I grew up in Lancaster today for a beautiful vintage show. I uh, brought my Colorado cats up here. Press on to 1974, 295. Second sled, that's a 340 quad plug motor, pretty rare. Quad plug, wow. Yeah. They didn't make very many of those. Uh, the next two sleds are uh, ice drag sleds that I use, run every once in a while on the ice and stuff. Next week there's a radar run coming up. I'm going to run those with some bigger sleds and stuff. But, uh, a lot of fun, this vintage stuff. you got to keep it going, keep sleds running. Absolutely. Very nice. Any chance you lift the hood? I'd like to see that quad plug. Yeah. Holy cow, look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, pretty rare. Green carbs. Look at this thing will move, huh? Runs pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Pretty well. Nice. And what year did you say this was? 1975. 75. Wow. Older than you are. No, 64. <laughs> but I remember these. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have good memories of these. Especially these when these came out. I was a teenager. Oh my God. Yeah. It got me all worked up when those came out. Uh, a favor to my granddaughter and a grandson. They like to race this one. They race it? Wow. Yes, they do. Nice. And uh, same with the other one, my grandson. Nice. You get a 5,000 and a 6,000. That's correct. Nice. Free air and a liquid. Okay, yeah. This is the free air? Yeah. Nice. Boy, that's nice. Just as an additional piece, that's part of a track dyno that they had in the early 70s. Country. Oh, the, yeah. okay, yeah. It's an, it's an original that you used, you used to see in the 70s in the magazines. Really? Yep. I'm going to come around and get a shot of that. That's the brains of it right there. Wow. Yeah. The other end that would spin on the track would spin and make get it going? That's right. Yeah. Did you measure the horsepower and yeah. temperature? Wow. Everything. That's crazy. I've never seen one of those. Yeah, that company is long gone. Wow. That's wild. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Anytime.
most recent job when I uh, retired was that I was the uh, owner of a, a co-owner with my son of a North Country 4x4. We had uh, Arctic Cat. And yeah, my stomach diesel, that you're a little bit quieter than that one was. Uh, and I've uh, redone some sleds. Uh, most of these I've tried to capture or, uh, originals in, in, uh, that we found in the which uh, came to me with some uh, extent of problems with it. But, uh, you know, we had one that had a broken track and another one had a seized engine and the other one had a really seized engine the mice had gotten into. Oh. But basically, um, for those reasons, I guess, the, the machines weren't used very much. And they ended up pretty much in the condition you see them now. They've been polished up and uh, a few little things have been touched up and painted up the skis and things like that. But they're, they're, they're original sleds. The red and white one, which is a 65, uh, <coughs> Really, you know, when I bought it, was uh, white and rust. Yeah, white and rust. White and rust, because I think somebody at the factory didn't have time to properly treat the metals that day or that month, and so the paint just peeled off. It. <coughs> Excuse me. Other than that, uh, the sled was fairly original and had originally been shown up in Snowdio a number of years ago by uh, Frank Lowell, and uh, then resold it with Doug Woods, and I bought it from Doug. So it's a, it's a pretty authentic uh, 1965. Nice. So that's kind of been my my hobby in my spare time. Uh, I've been uh, playing around with these, and I've still got a few more to do. So that nice. gives me something to do when I get up in the morning. And nice. Do you restore slides for others? And uh, you know, I, I did it so long that I, I don't mind helping people out. Somebody's got a specific problem, or, but I uh, haven't been taking on projects. It's a little noisy here. Yeah, we can pause for a second. Let them go by here. That's cool. I've been really kind of helping people out with with restorations and so forth, and I, you know, I'd consider doing one, but. I got to get mine done before I tackle somebody else's. So sure. it's really been more of a hobby, just getting to it when I can get to it. Somebody was in a big rush, maybe, but sure. I might not live long enough to finish it. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Now, do you want to put a phone number up in case someone wants to contact you, or yeah, if they just you know want to talk, they got a question on something. It's uh, eight zero two six seven six three five seven eight. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much. It was nice okay. to meet you. Thanks. Nice talking to you.
Hi folks, today we're here at Crane's Museum in Lancaster, New Hampshire. What a wonderful day and a wonderful show. These three snowmobiles are my lorry little skippers. Um, they were made in Connecticut originally, 1970, 71, and 72. Um, they're kind of a rare snowmobile. You don't see them very often. Um, they get a lot of attention when I bring them to shows. They run great. They're powered by a Briggs & Strat, and they were built by a family-run business, and um, they just decided to produce them. The oddity of them is, is they were out before the kitty cat was. They are the really? first miniature snowmobile built. Uh, by 72 was Lori's last year and Arctic Cat's first year with a kitty cat. So Arctic Cat was paying attention when they saw these little skippers. They said possibly a market for this small snowmobile. Um, they're just a great little machine. They're very dependable. Unfortunately, I don't have any grandchildren that ride them. They just come to shows and sit here and idle, but I still do enjoy bringing them and the crowds enjoy seeing them because it's just something a little bit different. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and what was your name? Yeah. My name is Gary. I'm from Central New Hampshire. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Cool. I appreciate it. Thank well, you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. like the vintage suit. Thank you. That's nice. Those are my sled. Oh, that's yours? Yeah. Nice. I'm doing a thing for a video magazine about vintage snowbills. Do you feel like talking it up? I guess so. Just, you know, my name is, and this my is my 69, you know, whatever. That's, my name's Steve Ruffner. Uh, my 69 Panther. Uh, Southern JLO. And that's my 77 Cutter Cat. My daughter likes to ride around it. Oh, nice. And my father, Ken Ruffner, that's his 
restored snow jet. Nice. So you guys came here on these? No, we actually came from St. Johnsbury. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Very nice.
anything more here? Sure is. <laughs> I think you got it by a couple miles. <laughs> 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 the, trophy, the trophy for. Can I this? this? This award here uh, is something Paul came up with. It's a uh, Conrad Rollins Memorial Award. Conrad Rollins uh, was. Without a doubt, the greatest Polaris racer ever in New England. Nobody came close. Conrad passed away last November. And this is a special award that goes to the best Polaris in the show. And this year it goes to the Gibbs family.